Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMI 365. In today's lesson, I'm going to be covering app protection policies from Microsoft Intune. App protection policies are a big portion of the mobile application management side of Microsoft Intune, and they do allow you to protect corporate data on unmanaged devices. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up these policies within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, and then I'll walk you through the end user experience as well on both an iOS and an Android device. Before we get into the actual policy configuration, I quickly wanted to reference some of the main goals you should have as a corporation when you're thinking about instituting some of these app protection policies. You obviously want to remain compliant. You don't want to have data loss to unmanaged or untrusted locations. When an employee leaves or they have their device lost or stolen, you want to have the ability to remotely wipe corporate data off of that device, as well as restrict cut, copy, paste, and save as permissions to untrusted or unmanaged locations. The ultimate goal here though obviously is to increase your security posture while not reducing the productivity of the end users. So we still want them to be able to access this corporate data and interact with it so that they can remain productive within their day-to-day -day activity. But we also want to make sure that they're accessing it in a secure fashion and that they're not able to save or store this data in locations of which we cannot access as the IT administrator. So getting into policy configuration here, I'm within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. I've gone under Apps and then App Protection Policies here. When you click on Create Policy, you have three options at your disposal. We went through in a separate lesson how you set up a Windows Information Protection Policy, which is much like what you'll be seeing here with iOS and Android. In this demo, I'm just going to create the iOS policy. The Android policy is almost mirroring that completely with a couple of different settings, obviously native to that OS. Getting into the wizard though here to create this policy, go ahead and give this a name and we'll click on next. Under the app section here, you're able to add public apps or custom apps for what you would call a managed application. And so this is where your protection layer starts. Under this first section, you have target apps on all device types. You could select yes here, which would encompass both an MDM enrolled device or a device that is unmanaged. If you were to click on no here, you could select one or the other separately. It may be that you have more granular settings for the unmanaged device versus one that is under the full MDM solution because you obviously have a lot more control there for the settings and the kind of state that that device is in. I'm gonna go ahead and just select yes here so we can apply it to both. The custom apps section, you can upload custom applications, but in the public app section, you're going to have a library of apps that Microsoft gives to you here. The most common, if you're just getting started out, is obviously to encompass the basic Microsoft suite. So looking at things like Teams, Word, OneDrive, things of that nature, basically to say, hey, this is a trusted application or managed application that I have within this device. So I'm just going to select those here, and this would encompass a lot of what you'd be looking to do. Outlook is a big one of these as well too, where they're accessing their email on the device. I'm gonna go ahead and select next here. And here we get into some of the data protection settings that you can configure. So a lot of this is really cool in the sense of how restrictive and protective you could be. This first setting here, you can block backing up of the org data into iTunes or the iCloud environment, which I would recommend doing. Send org data to other apps. You probably wanna select the managed apps here, which is basically saying that you could send data from Microsoft Word into Microsoft SharePoint because they're two managed applications versus saying that you could share a Microsoft Word doc into your personal Google Drive. It would prevent them from doing so. You can save copies of work data. You could block that as well too. And when you do so, this opens up. So you could say, well, in lieu of that, I would allow them to save it to their OneDrive for Business or their SharePoint environment because that's actually a managed location. Transfer telecommunication data to, you could say none for this particular section. We recommend doing that. Receive data from other apps. You could just say policy managed apps. And this allows you to then block or allow open data in org documents, which I would allow, which is basically saying that you could open up a Word doc in Microsoft Word, for instance, if you get that through email. Restrict co copy paste between other applications. The policy managed apps with paste in is a good one because it allows you to paste in third party data into your managed applications, but it doesn't allow the inverse of that. So you can't cut copy paste into 
thing like Notepad, for instance, on your iOS device or a memo within Android, just because that is not a managed application that you've selected. You could decide to cut copy paste character limit. I haven't found a big use case for that yet, but it's possible that you can do that here. You could block third party keyboards as well too. You could require encryption of this data, which I highly recommend as far as the functionality there goes. Sync policy managed app data with native apps. This is something that you could block as well too. And that would block them for instance from saving contacts from their Outlook environment to the native contacts on their cell phone for instance. You could block the printing of org data, which is a lot of something you may want to do, especially for mobile devices. Restrict web content transfer with other apps does allow you to decide, hey, I want to have a managed browser like Microsoft Edge to be the browser that they open this up in. Otherwise, it might just open up you know, in a Safari browser or something like that that you would have on the device itself. So just keep that in mind. This one I don't consider to be as big of a concern versus the other things that you're doing here as well as this org data notifications. This is just the notifications on the iOS or Android app itself. So you could say block org data or be blocked altogether. This one isn't really as much of a big deal, but it's just another granular setting you have at your disposal. Under the access requirements here, you do have the ability to set up a pin and I'll be showing that later in the demo here, but this does allow you to set a pin so that if the device is actually stolen or lost, for instance, and that user tries to go into another application, there's a further layer of protection where they're asked to put in a four digit pin or whatever digit you select here as far as the minimum length. And that just allows you more granular ability for the security of these applications on these devices that aren't under full management, maybe BYOD. You could use Touch ID instead of the pin for access as well as Face ID as well here too. And then you could decide some timeout activity to say, hey, every 30 minutes, I need you to re-authenticate with your face ID, for instance, or use the pin in lieu of that uh, to get it back into this application. You could say a pin reset is due after a certain number of days. And, and the app pin here, when device pin is set, is saying that this is a MDM enrolled device and you've set the app pin in those particular settings. So this isn't really required for what you would be setting here as an unmanaged device. Work or school account credentials for access is a bit redundant. I'd recommend not requiring this if you're requiring a PIN. Basically, it's making them sign in every single time they touch that application and it rechecks it after a period of inactivity. You could do that if you really wanted to, but again, we're looking for the productivity to be high for a user, not getting really frustrated with having to get into these apps while still maintaining some security there. For the conditional launch here, you have some app conditions and device conditions that you can set. These default ones are pretty good where you can have a max pin attempt at five before it's asking you to reset that pin. You could have an offline grace period of 720 minutes and this 90 day period as well too where it would wipe the data remotely as well. So it's giving you some more automated controls for inactivity on the account as well too. And then down here, this is a great one to keep, which is saying that if it's a jailbroken device, you block access to it as well too. So those are a lot of the granular abilities. You also could decide a min or max OS version device model and allowed device threat level is something that I won't be getting into fully, but it's a combination of utilizing the threat model that is tied to third parties, which is an integration that I won't again be covering in this lesson. The assignment section here, you could add it to certain users or groups or extend this out to uh, different groups to exclude. Basically here, I would think that if you're doing this for just unmanaged devices, you would want to do it for all users. So you would want to select a group that includes all users. But again, that could be subjective with what settings you're pushing out or if you're applying this to devices that are under BYOD or the ones that are enrolled fully in the MDM solution. So once you're done here, we can go ahead and create this policy and it'll begin to take effect. Once devices start checking in and they're capturing this policy, you'll be able to see the users that are checking in here and have access teams and have kind of interacted with this app data. So that's really cool reporting here. The final part of this video, let's pop in and actually see this end user experience on both an iOS and an Android device. Okay, so I'm here on an iOS device and I'm going into the Outlook app here and I'll sign in with some credentials. Once I do, I'm going to be prompted to sign in with my password here. 
And from there, it's actually going to also prompt us to set up MFA if we have that as well too. So it's another third layer of protection. And then once you get into the check app status here, it's going to prompt you and tell you that this app is under your organization's protection and you need to restart the app. So once you do that and load this app back up, it will be enrolled in the app protection policy that you've created here. And from there, you can turn on notifications and then refresh as well here too, to then display all of your email. When I click into an email here, I just wanna show the cut, copy, paste restrictions next. So I can go into an email for this managed app and I'll go ahead and just copy some of the text that's in the email here. From there, I'll go into Notepad, which is an unmanaged application that is personal to me on my device. So I'm gonna to try to paste it here. And you can see here, it says your organization data cannot be pasted here. Final piece here on the iOS application as well too. Let's pop into a document here within Word. Word is also another protected location that I've set here. And you'll notice you get these prompts here that aren't native if you don't have an app protection policy in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to save this to a personal location. And you'll notice that I don't have there, but if I click on the files app or add a place here on other locations, it'll say your administrator doesn't allow saving to personal locations. Next here, we're popping into an Android device and we're gonna look at the connection here. So I'm gonna add an account for a personal email address and I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And now it's saying, hey, your department, IT department is helping protect work or school data to this app. So I'll click back into Outlook here. And it's telling me again about the prompt for that. And now it's helping me establish that pin that we saw as well too through the settings in the app protection policy. So I'm establishing a pin and it'll have me confirm it here as well. And then we'll go ahead and allow access and they'll be prompted with an MFA code as well here too. This other example, final example here is just showing adding a email account to the native email app that's on an iOS device. So you're signing in here with your user information and this is telling you about the remote capabilities that the IT administrator has and this relates to our app protection policy. So we can see all the information for what we're actually asking for. And the user can consent to this before actually setting up and fully enrolling their mail within the native mail app. Well, once they do, they'll have that all come through here like you see. So that's everything that I want to showcase for you guys in today's video on app protection policies. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll be walking through managing Apple devices within Microsoft Intune. Thanks guys, have a great day.